Okay, guys. Go ahead, Andrew. Coach, uh, 18 points in the paint. Um, what did Clemson do to kind of limit the effectiveness that you guys had previously been having some success with the time? I think that they're always been a good defensive team, but you can't have se if you have 17 turnovers in a low possession game, you're not going to have a lot of points from anywhere. It's a low possession game, and uh, 17 times we gave it to them without a shot. You know, you look down there, and uh, none of the big guys. Uh, Dayron was six for eight, but Armando was 0 for one. Garrison four for ten. Uh, so when we did get it, we didn't necessarily make it, but it wasn't just that they cut us off inside. Our whole offense, uh, 10 turnovers in the first half, uh, one offensive rebound, or two offensive rebounds in the whole first half. So it wasn't just getting the ball inside. Our big guys were not as active as they needed them to be. If we were more active, we would have had more offensive rebounds in the first half, but uh, uh, that's about it. Uh, Brendan. Hey, Roy, I, I wanted to follow up on the offensive rebounding, obviously far off sort of the pace that you guys had been uh, streaming towards the last couple of games. Was that just a matter of matchups or intensity or, or it, what, what do you sort of attribute that to? I'd say two things. And first, let's give Clemson some credit, guys. I mean, <laughs> they're not uh, uh, Sloopy Dogs team. I mean, they're a good defensive team and they try to take away your second shot opportunities. I would imagine that uh, Brad felt like offensive rebounding of ours was a strength, and so they try to do a good job. Uh, and then again, we didn't do as good a job as we want to of getting to the boards. I mean, it's uh, second chance points six and five. Uh, that means that both tub clubs tried to do a better job of rebounding and taking away those second shot opportunities that a lot of times turn into points. But guys, uh, two offensive rebounds in the whole first half and I think, what'd you say, we missed 12 shots, so we got two offensive rebounds. Our percentage is way up there in the country about the percentage of shots that we retrieve ourselves. Uh, so Clemson's going to box you out, and we know that, but really good teams are going to do that. Thank you. CL? Roy, how much do you think with, with this young team having that week off uh, affected maybe the rhythm that they had gotten into in in winning six of those last seven games before tonight? You know, see, I guess it could have. I didn't feel like it would be. We had two really good practices. Uh, we worked 10 times harder in practice the last two days than we did in the game tonight. And uh, I felt that uh, we would play well. I really did. I thought that we had made some good strides defensively in the practices the last two days. But we let them shoot. To, I mean, Hemingway is a shooter, and we understand that. But So we don't deny. And then he gets the ball and drives straight to the basket, dunks on us. That's like the first or second possession of the game. And uh, one time we had a guy cross the lane, and we didn't have anybody help the helper, and so he lays it up. Uh, so it was a total breakdown defensively, and they hit us early. And uh, we were still OK. And, uh, we were even okay in midway through the second half. It gets, it's a four-point game, and RJ misses a layup. Dayron gets a rebound, misses a layup. Garrison tries to dunk it and misses. And uh, that would have made it a two-point game. And, uh, you know, you like your chances a little bit better, but when you miss three layups in a row, and in the next possession, I think, is when uh, Caleb charged inside. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I think you got to give Clemson credit, too. I mean, Amir Sims, six assists and one turnover. And uh, uh, we had eight assists and 17 turnovers as a team. And so I think he tried to give them a, a lot of credit for doing some more things that were really good too. Brian Keyes. Roy, you mentioned the turnovers. You're averaging a little under 15 coming into this game and yet 17 tonight. What needs to change to fix that? Is it just a matter of being more attentive with the ball or changing something about the offense? Oh, tonight I think it was everything. We had a player that drove to the middle, drove to from the corner to the middle, turned around and made a bounce pass to the corner. There was nobody there. I mean, you know, some of the turnovers were really bad, really bad. And guys, 17 turnovers is 10 times worse in a low possession game. I don't have my uh, points per possession chart to say how many possessions it was but I feel like it was a lot fewer possessions than what we've been having recently. So Coach Smith used to say that turnovers are usually uh, selfishness, which means the guy's trying to make a great play 
or carelessness. And I think some of them were selfishness, but more of them were carelessness. And give Clemson's defense some credit too. Thank you. Adam, go ahead. Roy, what did you make of Armando tonight? I mean, it seemed like he never was in it. Only one shot. Uh, and he obviously had been playing so well the last the last couple games. Uh, I, if I knew, I would have tried to <laughs> change it before the game started. But that was hard to understand as well. Because as you said, I mean, I think the last two games, he's like 8 for 10, 8 for 11 or something like that for the last two games and was really active. But it was bad when Amir Sims, the first time he got the ball, drove him right to the basket and laid it up over top of him. Sometimes those kind of plays tend to affect kids mentally. and. Maybe Armando couldn't shake that part of it, but uh, you know, uh, took one shot, uh, two turnovers, four fouls. It was not a good night for Armando, and he, for the most part of the year, has been our most consistent player. 72 possessions today. So 72 possessions and 17 turnovers is a lot higher than what we've been percentage-wise than what we've been having. All right, we got time for two more, Davis, and then Kip, please. Coach, what specifically can you do to ensure that Baycott gets more field goal attempts throughout the game? He's got to play better. It's the bottom line. I, I never are, I'm never concerned about how many shot attempts each of our guys get. If they play better, they're going to get more of those. Uh, Garrison got 10 attempts. Uh, Dayron got eight. Uh, you know, and it's about the kind of what the, the number of shots they usually get. Armando's got to move more, move better. Uh, twice, uh, uh, one time he got it and took it up, missed it and got it. And it was a jump ball. He got an offensive foul in the first half. We're going to turn in leaning with his uh, elbow and hit the guy in the chest. Uh, so he's got to play better. Okay, Kip, last one, please. Yeah, Roy, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to gauge this when you're not in the arena, but, but it seemed like your players seemed to lack a, a sense of urgency. Uh, and I'm wondering if that stemmed from the troubles Clemson's been having lately that they may be underestimated. You know, I, I, Kip, I don't think so. I told him, I said, this is going to be a big time basketball game. I think Virginia, Florida State, Clemson are, you know, the best defensive teams in our league. Uh, they're always going to guard you. Brad's done a great job with that over his career. Uh, I told him this was a wounded team. Uh, they were embarrassed in their last game. Uh, we should not take anyone lightly. Respect everyone, fear no one, but never take anybody lightly. So we even talked about that. And uh, I guess if uh, same answer I gave to Adam, I guess a few minutes ago, if I'd known how to correct it, I would have corrected it before. But I was so dumb, I thought that we would be ready to play tonight, and I thought we would play well. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you.